So in this video, we're going to be building a basic background, and we're going to do that using three game objects that each have their own sprite on top of them. And then after that, we're going to make sure that anything that is in the background has its own layer so that anything like a player, an NPC, or the actual tiles that the player is going to stand on all show in front of the background no matter what. So let's go into our project. You can see in the hierarchy that the default scene is called sample scene. Let's go ahead and rename that. So I'm going to click on the scenes folder inside of the project window, find the sample scene.unity, click it, and then F2, and we're going to rename it to be gameplay scene. So since the scene has been modified, we gotta reload it. So hit reload, and you can see the name is updated inside of the hierarchy itself. So next, let's create a game object to hold our background images. I'm gonna right click in the gameplay scene and choose create empty. So this creates a game object that has nothing but a transform. I'll rename this to be background, but this is actually not going to hold the background images itself. It's just going to be a parent object that will basically have a list of the background items. So right clicking on our background parent game object, I want to choose create empty. I'm going to rename this game object background one. So with BG1 on the right in the inspector, we're going to add a component to it. So click add component and search for sprite. We're going to be looking for the sprite renderer which allows us to assign an image to the game object. So as you can see, a game object is composed of multiple components. One that every game object has is a transform, but others like sprite renderer are optional. So the sprite renderer, we can put an image into the sprite slot in order to have it show. So inside of our project window, look for the art directory and then go into free cute tile set. So this is going to contain the background images that we set up in a previous video. So let's take BG1 and then assign it to Sprite. And there you can see our background image. If it has the right pixel preset settings, then you shouldn't see any blurriness between the pixel. It should render every pixel crisply. Okay, so if we zoom out a bit with middle mouse wheel scrolling out, you can see that this barely fits our camera currently. So we might end up having to both shrink the camera size but also to make this background image tile as we walk across our platformer level. So take the draw mode setting in the inspector and change that to tiled. And then we can set a width for this background. So I'm gonna take width and set it to 500. Now you can see that this background is gonna tile over and over and over again, more than likely big enough for just about any platformer level, but you can always extend it further if you need the size to be bigger. So let's do the same thing with background two and background three. To save time, I'm going to take BG1 in the hierarchy and hit Control D on it to make a duplicate copy. Then I'll just rename it with F2, BG2. And you can see we already have the sprite render. So I'm just going to change the image here from BG1 to BG2. Now you can see it's currently showing in the background. So if we want to make sure that that's showing on top of whatever's behind it, you can change the order in layer to a higher number. So I'm going to take the order in layer here and I'll just make it one. So now the cloud part of the background shows in front of the sky, which is what we would expect. So let's do that one more time. Take BG2, Control D to duplicate it, F2 to rename it, and do BG3. And now take the grass background, BG3, and put that in the sprite slot. Now to make sure that this always shows in front, I'm going to take the order and layer and set it to two, even though currently the grass is already visible. So for right now, things are looking pretty much correct, but one problem we're going to run into is that these backgrounds are on the sorting layer default. If we click on the default dropdown, you can see that everything is going to be on this default sorting layer, and that's not what we want, because we actually want the background to always be below the default so that things on default or a higher layer are going to show on top. So click on the default dropdown and then choose Add Sorting Layer, where it says Sorting Layers on the right under the inspector. Click Plus, and let's make this layer name background. Now click on the two lines horizontally and move this above default. This now means that background shows below default. So if you have anything on the default sorting layer, it's going to render on top. So now we need to go to each of these three backgrounds, or you can hold shift down and select them all at once, left clicking on each one as you add it. Or you can left click on the first one, hold shift and left click on the last one to select the range between BG1 and BG3. And now change the sorting layer to background. So since we have three items selected, if we click on each one individually, you can see it's been assigned to all of them at the same time. Of course, you can also assign it individually as well. 
Now, the last thing I'm going to do is click on the main background game object and make sure the position settings are all set to 0, 0, 0. So the parent's position is, is also going to change all of the children's game object positions. And I have no need for it to currently be moved from the 0, 0, 0 starting position. So with that, we should be able to scroll across our game and see the background extend pretty much forever. And that's how we'll set up the basic background for our platformer.